Good morning, beautiful makers. Welcome to episode 40 of Stitching the High Notes, a video podcast about knitting, sewing, music, the arts, and all things crafty. My name is Joanna, and you can find me on the social medias as Opera Joe, most notably on Instagram and Ravelry. I'm coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area, where I am a local opera singer as well as an arts fundraiser. There is a Ravelry group for the podcast, which has a bunch of threads about introducing yourself, ask away thread, lots of giveaways happen in there, cows and make alongs, all kinds of good stuff. So I encourage you to check that out and join our group of Knitty Misfits. And you can also find in there show notes for each episode with links to things I chat about with you today, as well as show notes can be found on the stitchingthehighnotes.com website. Hello, how are you all doing? I hope you've had a great week. I'm determined to try to make this a weekly podcast again after having a few months of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey craziness. <laughs> so um, it's nice, it's so wonderful to get back into a bit of a rhythm. Um, a welcome back to all of you lovely returning viewers and a huge welcome to any new viewers who are checking out the podcast for the first time. Welcome. I hope you enjoyed this little chat and visit today as you work on your project. Um, so yeah, I am doing well. I have a lot to share with you and to chat with you about. So let's get started. So first, I'm gonna switch things up a little bit, but first I wanted to give a big shout out to everybody who has introduced themselves in the last month in the introductions thread in the Ravelry group. Every first episode of the month, which is today, I do a little shout out to everybody. So without further ado, roll that epic Star Wars roll call. A huge welcome to Elmari2, who is El Elmarie or Elmarie from South Africa. Welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome to Raina Gale, who is Raina from Texas. Crystal Sew and Stuff, who is Crystal from Maryland. Lacey Needle, who is Stephanie from Arizona, originally from Washington State. Psycho Wolokian, who is Kim from Texas. Not Barbie, who is Barbie from Florida. Hetsy, who is Heather, who is from Comic-Con, who I met at Comic-Con. Welcome, Heather. And she's from San Diego, California. Robin's Hood, Robin's Hood who is Jera from Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. Michelle MCK, who is Michelle from Sydney, Australia. And Brenda KP. KBB, Brenda KBB, who is Brenda from Tennessee. Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome to our Nitty Misfit group. Um, <clears throat> so if you would like to introduce yourself in the introduction thread, please feel free to do so or, or just peruse through there and learn about some of the folks who are in our community. It's wonderful to read through and we're from all over the world. It's really heartwarming and wonderful. So I mentioned I'm going to kind of switch things up. I'm going to switch some segments around today to try to get into a different flow. So don't worry, community corkboard is going to happen, but I really wanted to just jump into some works in progress, some nitty goodness. And I could see we're already like three minutes in or something and we're getting to the works in progress. Woo -woo. So I... I'm working on two things right now. I, um, I'll show the big thing here in a second, but the first thing is my sock from my sock blank that I cast on at Comic-Con a couple of weeks ago. So here it is. I am doing my second sock. I finished the first sock, which is way across the room over there, but this is using a sock blank made by the lovely Andy of Andre Sue Knits. Hi, Andy. And she hand paints these gorgeous sock blanks. And when I saw this one, it made my heart sing. And I knew I had to take it to Comic-Con 
to be my really simple on the go waiting in ballroom 20 hall h in line knitting project so it's amazing so here is my second sock yay i'm doing toe up i did judy's magic cast on um so i did 10 stitches and then you make one knit a row make one knit a row you know in the round and then i started the foot and i just love how these are kind of striping up in a way and pooling it's kind of you get all the cool action in one go it's really cool i have a little tardis progress keeper and which is just for right now showing me what the right side is um and now i'll put it up here to show my progress but yeah i'm using 2.5 millimeter needles that's what i usually use um and i do 64 stitches and yeah i'm digging it it's just a wonderful thing to grab in between this major project, which is what I'm working on. So I am working on for the Summer Garment Cow, which I've been hosting since May 1st, and it ends this month, the end of August 1st, or August 31st. Oh, it's coming up. So I am making a linen pullover using linen yarn from Quince & Co called Sparrow in the Eclipse colorway. And last week, it was last week, because I'm weekly podcast again, woohoo. Um, <laughs> last week I showed you I was almost done with the back panel. This is done, I'm doing the Gilead pullover, my bad, which you can see right here. And this is a lovely loosey-goosey um, linen kind of lace panel in the front pullover that is constructed in pieces. So you have like the back panel, and then the front panel, and then a little bit of the sleeves. Don't want to give too much of the secrets off the way. And I was, last week, just finishing up the back panel. <clears throat> I noticed that I had forgotten a sloped bind off on one of the sides, and so my stitches didn't look even. And I was, like, going to troubleshoot and figure it out to make sure that when I bound off the neck bit because you were doing a slope bind off for the shoulders that the neck sat in the middle because um, otherwise it'd be kind of like fuck. So after I signed off from you guys, I troubleshooted and I had indeed um, forgotten to do a bit of the sloped bind off on the wrong side, which was reaffirming to me that I've got an eye and I've got to trust my instinct. So I counted up the stitches to confirm that <clears throat> and so I rectified that and, my, and I didn't like pull any stitches out. I just like uh, did a little, uh, an extra sloped bind off and I counted again the stitches on both side, sides before I bound off the neck. And so I finished it. Yay! So this is the back panel. So... <clears throat> Pardon me. Let me get a little sip of water. I forgot to do tea time. Tea time. I just have water um, this time. So I'm off kilter here. But grab your beverage if you haven't already. And let's get started. Awkward. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so the back panel. So the hem is on the bottom there. A little rolled up but with blocking it'll come out and then you increase for the sides and then you do the armhole shaping and then you knit a little bit here for the shoulders and then here it's hard because it's rolled up but you can see that's the neck bind off it's just a regular bind off but it looks very neat. And then you do this sloped kind of bind off here. Ta -da! And it's worked out really well. I tried it on like my back right here. It's got seven inches of positive ease worked into it. So it's gonna be good. 
and it's going to be a little bit bigger on the back, I think. Um, hold on, let me move this guy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> then the front piece, the back piece, I think it's a little bit bigger than the back front piece. The back piece is bigger than the front piece because uh, I think it wraps around a little bit and then you seam it up. Um, not quite on the sides, but a little bit in the front. I might be wrong, but I'm going with the flow. So yeah, and then there's this I gotta fix. You can see I had to, I usually start new skeins of yarn on the side as you should, but I got caught doing yarn chicken and I had to do, um, add a new skein in the middle kind of of here. And I wove in too much on the sides here and I need to weave in the ends down. So I've got to fix that because otherwise you're totally going to see that when I have it on. And that's not cool, man. So I've got to, I've got to finish that up and fix that. I might do that after blocking. I'm not sure, but we'll fix that guy. So I might have like a little bit of a <clears throat> dark spot there, but that's not really going to bug me. So yeah, so that's the back panel. And then I cast on the front panel. So I've been housing this in my lovely French supply bag, which is wonderful to bring with and commute with on the BART train, which is how I commute to work now in my new job. And I've added some new buttons. I've got a little Gus from Saga, this weird like Jetson looking wildfire pin from Game of Thrones, <laughs> my Game Boy pin, and a Tardis one that I got from Comic-Con. But I love it, you know, it's worth the hype. Because I felt like when something's kind of trendy, I kind of avoid it because I don't want to follow the crowd, so to speak. <laughs> I like to kind of find the new off-beaten path kind of thing. Um, and But I was like, okay, let me check this out because it really does look intriguing to me. And then what sold me was the pockets is inside. So you've got these pockets and then you've got this amazingness, this flap, which has little grommets in it so that you can do color work. I'm assuming that's what it's for. And it's really well constructed. It's a kind of, you know, something that will stand the test of time and commuting and it's nice. So. It was, it was worth it. So I've been housing my project in there. And without further ado, here is front piece. Yay! So I did all of this. I cast it on, I want to say the next day after I podcasted last week, which was last Saturday or Sunday. I think it was Sunday. So a little under a week. And I've done all of this. So it's this beautiful lace panel in the front that's called like a tree panel is what it's called. Let's see if I can show you. There you go. Isn't that pretty? So, la la. And it's going really well. I did learn one thing. So there are a couple of stitches or one stitch I hadn't really done before, I'd seen, but I hadn't done before, which is a kind of a basic one, but I'm still a fairly new knitter. I've only been knitting about three years, I think. Um, and it's a right twist and a left twist knit stitch. And I looked on the YouTubes and there really are like a variety of different ways to do it, it seems. Um, not a huge amount, but a variety. And in the pattern, it was, described in a very much different way than how it's the majority of the time done online. So I decided to go with what was online because it looked faster <laughs> and simpler. Um, and I had the right twist knit stitch down and it's looking good. And I'm going to take a picture here and put it up so you can see kind of what I'm going to describe here. Hopefully it's kind of hard with the black yarn, <clears throat> but basically the, pattern and the texture that's created with the right twist is working was working great at, at on the onset at the beginning 
But my left twist, the way I had been doing it, was kind of flat and it <clears throat> wasn't raising up from the fabric like the right twist was. So I watched the video again and I had been not doing the stitch correctly. I had been doing the second portion of the stitch wrong where I wasn't knitting. Um, I was knitting the second of two loops from the back, but then I was knitting from the front, the front loop instead of knitting in the back, both loops in the second round of the left twist, which is really hard to describe. Maybe in a future podcast, I'll try to film that and show you all what I'm talking about. Maybe next week. Um, so you can kind of see in my picture that my right twists are raised up a little bit and have this really nice texture. And then the left ones are like, wah, wah. <laughs> and they're like really flat. And I was like, oh, that's going to bug me. I didn't, I decided not to rip it out because it is at the bottom of the hem and not really many people are going to see that except for me. Um, <clears throat> and it was only a few rows. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it right going on. And then lo and behold, when I did fix it, it looks right. They're both kind of raised up a little bit. The texture looks really great. So now we're flying. Now we're going. I did mess up <clears throat> um, this little kind of diamond. Got a little messed up right here. Because um, you can see it's not as pointed. But really, again, it's at the bottom of the front panel. Not a lot of people are going to see it. And so I just decided to kind of... I would gotten off a stitch somehow. Which I have only done in a couple of rows. We're only one row. So I'm doing pretty good so far. But, um, so... I just, like, knit together a little bit and I was all good. And you can't really tell. Not too much. And it hasn't, I was concerned it might mess up the rest of the pattern, but it seems like it's continuing on. Okay, I like how you can see it with my pale skin in the background. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm using, <clears throat> uh, what size am I using? US 5 3.75 millimeter needles. I have these little stoppers on that I have from Coco Knits because otherwise it will come off there. And I'm using... These lovely needles that I really want to get a whole set of. Hint, hint, mama. Birthday. <laughs> um, and that is the Lika um, needles. I think that's how you say it. <clears throat> and they are driftwood needles. I don't really think they're actually driftwood, but maybe not. But they look kind of like driftwood. So you can kind of see those there. And they are, I've got the pointed ones that are for like interchangeable, like the stems, so to speak. And then I got a cable, I think a 32 or a 24 inch cable um, and twisted them on because I was like, I'm going to go with this because if I like them and I get the interchangeable set, I would love, I always need an extra pair of fives of uh, five needles or six needles for all of the like shawls and stuff. So that worked out really well. Good thinking, Pastor Anna. But I love them because they, the join on them is so non-existent <laughs> and smooth. More so than my Carbons or my other, especially more so than my Addy Turbo Click set that I still regret getting. Um, because they have, the Addies are like, frum, frum. <laughs> and the Carbons is a little bit, it's not too bad, but these are like, oh, um, so yeah, I really love them for that. And I love the wood needles for linen because it has just enough grip, but they are smooth enough that it's not like, uh, forget, is it clover bamboo? Like it's super grippy. However, all of that being said, now that I'm in the lace section, I'm missing me my really pointy metal needles. It's I'm noticing I'm getting a little bit too tight um, with kind of my lace section. 
So I'm trying to get that down and not just kind of like, you know, not that I'm that tight, but it's not all loosey goosey like the rest of it. I want to make sure I'm not like messing up my gauge or anything, but so far I think it looks pretty good. And the fabric's coming out really even and yeah. I'm using stitch markers. Aren't these so pretty? These are lovely summery sea shelly stitch markers that were a set that my mom got me from So Sweet Violet. Hi Jules. Um, I'll pop up a picture here of all of the stitch markers so you can see them. They are so wonderful to work with. I think that the size of them, of the little of the little hoops here are just perfect. They're not too big, they're not too small, and I love the thickness of them too. Um, I just, I love them. They're like really delicate, gorgeous stitch marker yarn jewelry, if you will. And now that I've shown you, I can add my progress keeper back on, which I had been using before, which was that lovely little seashell one. So. It's lovely and I had been using the other two stitch markers before the white ones and then I switched them out because I wanted a little bit more bling <laughs> so it's fun and it's very summery so I'm plugging along I'm hoping we'll see how far I get by August 31st I would love to finish this for the summer garment cow you guys that are participating the amount of FOs oh, and some folks have been doing like five garments and all this stuff are just so inspiring and so beautifully made and if if you're not participating just go look at the FO thread and there's the chatter thread too it's gorgeous well done y'all oh my goodness so very very awesome and I think this will be a cow going forward as well and there's so many other like similar cows going on in know like Hannah of on the road <clears throat> I believe that's the name of the podcast um Hannah was doing I think it might be over I'm not sure um um go check out her podcast group for sure but she was doing like a linen along and I know a lot of people were like double dimping in that <clears throat> um and there's all kinds of good goody stuff so yeah so those were my works in progress. No finished objects quite yet, unless you count the back panel of the sweater. Um, cross stitch corner. Um, I don't have any cross stitch because I was working on that guy. I'm gonna be pretty monogamous the next um, couple of weeks, but I did wanna show you. <clears throat> Cause I keep showing a picture and I need to just show you. So this is what I have been working on. It's been on hiatus for about a month or so now. Um, as I was working on other things and kind of getting through my job transition. But this is the Forest Pattern by Satsuma Street. Oh, I can't wait to work on it. It's like, do, when you pick something up, does it all of a sudden you're like, I have to work on it now. That's what's happening right now. So this is um, a lovely, lovely pattern. Um, I can't wait to pick it up and get cracking on it again. Again, I'm going to concentrate on my Gilead sweater, but... I want to finish this so bad, especially as fall is approaching. Oh, I can feel fall in the air. Um, yeah, and I'm going to hang it up, I think. I'm going to get it framed and hang it up back there, which will be lovely. So, yeah, but I, um, there is a cross-stitch corner thread in the Ravelry group and some lovely folks in there. We've been chatting the past week. Hold on, let me put this down. So we've been chatting about this Satsuma Street pattern that came out not too long ago that's called Alpine. And it is gorgeous and it's kind of to celebrate the national parks and it's very summery. And I've had it in the back of my mind in my kind of internal queue <laughs> for cross stitch to do. Um, but I really want to finish this forest pattern first um, before I like dive in and start a new one. But we were talking about it and they were like, do you want to do a knit along? And I was like, I would, but just like casual, nothing big, kind of impromptu. And it is like, it'll last until we all finish it. <laughs> so it might be a couple of years. <laughs> so, um, 
I will have details about the pattern in the show notes and if you check out the cross stitch corner thread too, they're in there as well. If you want to join in, totally do. There's no official start date. It's kind of maybe December, January when I finish this guy, if not sooner. If you want to cast on now, go for it. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of casual. You know, it'd be fun to like work on the same pattern at different points, but at the same time. Um, my friend Margaret's going to join in and we're going to probably... You know, fairly soon, we have to chat, Margaret, about going to Needle in a Haystack, which is a local cross-stitching supply store and amazingness uh, in Alameda, California. And we're going to get supplies and all of that. Um, so yeah, so check it out. I think it'll be really cool. My friend Beth is, oddly enough, before I even saw all of this happening in the cross-stitch corner thread, I had talked to my really good friend Beth, um, who lives up in Seattle, and she cross-stitches quite often. That's her, she's a musician, she's an accompanist and coach um, for piano. And um, so she um, has been working on this Alpine, and she's loving it. So um, maybe I can convince her to get on Ravelry and join us. That'll be fun. So that's a little bit of cross stitch corner. I hope to have more in the coming weeks because it feeds the soul. It's great to have other crafts to like spur on your creativity and um, just kind of activate little different points of the brain. It's great. So I'm looking forward to that. So what I am jonesing for I worked on my show notes throughout the week because I think with finding, starting to feel a rhythm again with working in the new job and I think it's that whole like back to schoolish end of summer rhythm starting to come back. I am feeling a creative surge again. Like I am wanting to make all of the things <laughs> and plan to make all of the things. I don't feel pressure about it though like I have in the past, famous last words, but because I have some wonderful things that I'm making right now that I have goals for, um, I have some wonderful festivals coming up that I want to make some things for, and then I just, even compared to a year ago, I have a better idea of timing of, of what's an attainable goal, um, and then there's some knit-alongs that are coming up that I'll be co-hosting, namely the pumpkin cow, <laughs> which with uh, Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi. Um, we're going to be announcing that probably next week, maybe. I need to talk to you, Gabby. Um, but we've been chatting about it back and forth about what the start date for that is. Um, so I, some of the things that I'm going to tell you about that I'm jonesing to do and make, I'm kind of putting a little bit of a pumpkin spice on it, if you will. <laughs> so I, um, I have been jonesing for a solid color and kind of a need for this, not just that I want it, but a solid color shawl, kind of quasi chunky, maybe DK or worsted weight. And this came about me thinking about it because of my new job and my commute. And I need something either probably cream or black to go with the majority of my work clothes, one of which is this new little blouse thing that I got on Mod Club, side note, which I love these little sleeves. It has this little piping on there too. But, you know, I wear for the most part like black pants, um, you know, or solid color pants. And I have some gorgeous shawls that are very colorful and beautiful, but uh, my style is to wear those with darker colors or a solid color so that the sh that shawl can pop out. So I need kind of the opposite. I need like something that is warm for those foggy cold mornings from the walk from the train to work, <clears throat> but won't combat with like if I'm wearing a floral top or something. So I think I might make eventually um, a void shawl because I love the texture of it. It's very much my style, kind of art deco-y. Um, and 
it's thick enough but not too thick not like a chunky knit kind of thing it's still a shawl so I could wrap it around at work if I need be but it's got a lovely hang to it from the folks that have made it um, that I've seen who have made it um, I thought maybe to a cowl so I'm kind of searching through Ravelry patterns again which has been wonderful and such a rabbit hole and so inspiring I hadn't done that in quite some time so it's been a fun week to do that um, and I've got my eye on a few of those I like the cowls that are a little bit closer to the neck a lot of them like this um, star shower cowl um, by Hallie um, Haley Kelly Smith I think I'll put her name down here um, so I like a lot of her construction of cowls but yeah so I think a black one would be great I think like an oatmeal -y, not necessarily tweed but kind of like an oatmeal kind of color would be really great too so I'm on the hunt for that and then I'm also Jones and I'm looking at my notes here I was watching watching the grocery girls hi Jody hi Tracy and um, they are they've been making sweaters like cray cray they're amazing they've been pumping those sweaters out so I was like oh I really want I really want another Rhinebeck sweater because I'm going to Rhinebeck this year um, I've got my hotel phew, just in the nick of time <laughs> And um, I just need to get my plane ticket, so I'm saving my pennies for that. I'm going to get that soon, but I am going. So if you're going to be there, make sure we'll, we'll, we'll give more details the closer we get to that time. But I am going to wear my um, pumpkin ale cardigan that I made last year. Um, and then I'm going to wear, I might wear this guy. I think that'd be really nice for like the indoor events and stuff. I'm going to go to the Needles Up event that's being hosted by Andy of Andre St. Knits and lovely Sue and Chelsea of Legacy Fiber, or Legacy Knits, Legacy Fiber Arts Yarn Company. So I think that would be kind of nice for the indoors because I get like, especially when I'm meeting new people, my I'm like totally Celtic, like even talking to you guys, I get really red right here because I'm just like so excited <laughs> and I get a little sweaty. <laughs> so that would be very good to wear. But I would love like a casual, kind of semi-casual, worsted weight, easy to make, in the round, like I can make it in two weeks kind of sweater. So I put out a shout out kind of call on Instagram yesterday seeing what all your suggestions were. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. So many ideas and so many lovely suggestions. So I um, also would like to make this for the hipster cow that is happening or it's gonna happen starting September 1st maybe? Or maybe it's already started. Um, that's being hosted by Jacqueline of the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast. And it's to make something that only has like 30 or less um, projects a pattern that has 30 or less projects on Ravelry so anyway I was looking at the boxy pattern or the soiree pattern I'll have links to all of these in the show notes it would be too much for me to put a bunch of pictures on screen but <clears throat> um so I was looking at those and I love them but they're a little bit too boxy for me I've got big ladies and that can make me look even bigger than I am because I have a really small waist too so it's like I kind of want something a little bit form-fitting but still really casual and comfy and then I was looking a lot of people were suggesting the Veronica cardigan by Shannon Cook that I believe Tracy just made and some other folks have made which is gorgeous and I definitely have that in my queue but I'm looking for like something I can pull on pull over you know and put on on the plane kind of thing um and it's gorgeous but yeah I want to pull over and then um Carleen hi Carleen she suggested Icy Spring by Jorge Locatelli and um I really like that one I like the little detail in the front so that one's kind of in the in the pot to think about making and it's a little bit loosey-goosey but not as big as like the boxy by Lo Hohi Locatelli um or the soiree too um 
And then somebody mentioned a pattern by Alicia Plummer, who I love, and I've had a lot of her stuff in my favorites on Ravelry over time. And through looking there, I found this pattern called In Stillness. And I will put up a picture here. So I love this one. It's super classic. It's a little like classic in the sense that it's um, not vintage, but it you could see like somebody back in the day kind of wearing it kind of thing. And it has like kind of a square neck too. And like just a really easy, beautiful detail in the front and the back um, shoulder areas. Um, and then just kind of your standard. I went ahead and, and bought the pattern. I did notice though that it only has a few sizes. So I would need to adjust uh, for my bust size. So that's kind of a bummer, but um, I think doable. She is of the campsite cardigan fame, if you will. I know a lot of people have made that piece or seen it. That's how I was introduced to her lovely designs. Um, and I love her style, so I went through and favorited a whole bunch of other <laughs> other ones of hers, um, including also the Ed Edgartown Light, which is a DK weight pullover. Um, but I'm not sure if it's in the round, and I really want something in the round because I can zip and be done with that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, but, and I'm not, a lot of people suggested a cropped sweater because it's more of that vintage -y kind of style. I definitely have some of those in my queue. Um, I think that's for, I think I want to make some of those for work, um, coming up pretty soon. Um, I don't know when, maybe I cast it on in the next few months post Rhinebeck, but, um, I really kind of need to get some staple things in my wardrobe before I'm really wear those um, because they are so high-waisted and I don't really have anything right now that would complement that like I would like to get like some or make in a dream some like what are they called like cigarette pants or cigar pants <laughs> like the kind of like 60s kind of really or 50s really cute like slim pants um, and then like some lovely like A-line skirts would be really lovely too. So yeah, so that's on the horizon and I did favorite a lot of the ones that you suggested. So thank you all so much for that. So yeah, I'm Jonesing to cast something on like that in the next, maybe like September 1st or something, something that I can make in a couple of weeks or three weeks and just like bing, bang, boom. And I would pick up the yarn at like a local yarn store or something and yeah. So that's kind of daydreaming. It's lovely to like daydream about knitting projects again and think it put it in terms of like, what can I make super fast and add to my garment and that I have a need for too, which is exciting. So that'll bring in the queue. So things I'm actively actually planning to cast on very soon. And speaking of Rhinebeck, so Mina of the Knitting Expat, hi Mina, um, has a couple of designs and exciting things coming out very soon. So one is a mystery knit along called Road to Rhinebeck that starts September 2nd and it ends after Rhinebeck is done October 22nd. And it's a shawl pattern with two colors and a DK weight. And she said it's a fairly quick knit and I would love to have a Rhinebeck shawl. Um, and so I, I'm i not going to be buying too much except for maybe this worsted weight sweater, but I really want to start kind of shopping in my lovely, I'm pointing down to my, I'll show you really quick, my little stash here. Oh. And um, I realized that I had a couple of DK weight yarns that I think would be perfect for this mystery knit along that are in pumpkin colors. So I could do the mystery knit along, I could do something for the pumpkin along coming up, which will probably start sometime in September. So coming up and it's perfect. So let me grab that and I'll show you guys. Okay, now that I've grabbed it, I realize I don't have enough yardage for this, but I'm going to get similar colors because I still really want to make this shawl. 
but now I have to figure out what to make with this. So, <laughs> so I wouldn't have enough yardage for the road to Rhinebeck MCAL, but I was inspired to take part in it because of this loveliness, which I received um, from Little Bean Loves. And this is DK weight in the, what is it? Spice, which is the orange, and then the latte, which is this lovely color right here. Oh, it's so squishy. And so I'm going to get um, the yardage that I need for the shawl and um, do similar colors because I love that it's pumpkin and latte, pumpkin spice latte. I can't wait with my Nespresso. It's going to be amazing. So yeah, so I'm going to, that's in my queue to cast on September 2nd. So now I've got to go figure out yarn for that. I do have, I think this is... Is this DK? I do have this though. Hmm. I do have this, which is 230, and this is pumpkin. And this is DK weight too. I don't know. I don't think it's supposed to be a two color. Some something's got to be made out of these guys, so we'll see. But <clears throat> the mystery knit along totally gonna take part in. The other thing in my queue is also by Nina, and she is going to be releasing the pattern very soon, if not this morning, I don't know, very soon, which she talked about on her latest podcast, and that is the Color Blender Wrap, and it's kind of a fade-inspired, it is a fade kind of wrap, but she has like varying ways of creating it, and I believe she detailed there's one that's maybe, it looks like maybe about this big, kind of a scarf, and there's a version for four skeins of yarn that you could do. And it's got like really pretty patterning on it as well. And I just love that it's kind of a thicker wrap kind of scarf. It's not the massive find your fade shawl, which I had thought about doing, but I just, I was like, I'm not in a climate where that much, muchness. <laughs> would be good for me but um <clears throat> but I really was intrigued by this and it got me thinking I had found my fade early on but I only had I think it's four skeins and it's my hocus pocus yarn by legacy fiber arts and I desperately want to figure out a way to make them all in the same project so that they can live together forever. And I think this might be it, you guys. So I'm eagerly awaiting Mina's pattern and I think I'm going to cast this on. I would love, she said also that this is a fairly quick knit too. Um, so I would love to make it for Rhinebeck and to wear it and to show Sue and Chelsea and be like, hocus pocus, book. And just to have it too for Rhinebeck, just in all of the fall colors and everything, oh, it'd be so magical. So, and I was thinking too that maybe it would be fun to like on the ends of the scarf wrap thingy, um, color blender wrap, that's what it's called, that I would put little tassels on the bottom to make it kind of witchy and boho-y. So yeah, I'm totally inspired. My my creative mojo is totally back. So yeah, I'm a little bummed. I'm, I don't know what I was thinking. I was looking at my stash and just photos and I wasn't paying attention to yardage, but I do want to make something about this. Talk about creative mojo, pumpkin. <laughs> yeah. So those are in my queue. <clears throat> then I have a couple of things to talk to you about in from the posty. So first is I bought, so from the Posty is things that I've received in the mail, either that I've purchased or gifts. Um, this week it's patterns galore, patterns that I have um, either received or I have purchased myself. And the first one is I bought yesterday, because it was just released, is the Long Burn Shawl by Kay of the Bakery Bears. And it is gorgeous. I don't know, it's in my queue. I don't, I, it feels like something maybe I'll cast on in January because I do really want to make this sweater and, the, and these other items for Rhinebeck. Um, I think she is going to be having a knit along for it. So do check it out if you haven't already. 
but it is gorgeous. So I thought I would tell you a little bit about it, which she's written on her pattern page. And she says, this pattern emerged from my great love of all things Pride and Prejudice. I've wanted to design a shawl based on this for such a long time, and I'm so thrilled with the results. The center panel is designed to resemble tiny butterflies and brings to mind the many walks that Lizzie takes through the countryside around her home. The cabled border reflects the relationship between Mr. Darcy and Lizzie, a never-ending love intertwined from start to finish. I chose a yarn base that was soft and delicate with a lovely drape and an added sparkle. The design works best with a semi-solid or tonal yarn in two complementary colors. The shawl is perfect for all skill levels, having lots of interest yet soothing to knit. I had such fun designing and knitting this shawl, and I hope you do too. It's gorgeous, Kay, so congratulations, and I'm so excited to have that in my pattern library. The next one is a lovely gift that I received from Ellie, hi Ellie, who is Skein Deer uh, on Ravelry and of the Skein Deer Knits podcast. And she is queen of color work, y'all. She is amazing and so talented. And she has excitingly just released a, it's so exciting, a gorgeous mitten club called the Selbu Bundle. Um, and it is a pattern club. And I will give you all the details in a minute. I am so grateful. Thank you so much, Ellie. And she has also given me a subscription to this club for one of you yay so this will be a giveaway with details of how to enter on the Ravelry group there'll be a question prompt and one entry per person and then I will draw for a winner in a couple of episodes I'll have the details of when that will be in the um, giveaway thread so thank you Ellie so about this exciting club, this is um, <clears throat> a pattern club. This is what she says. This pattern club will grant you exclusive access to four as of yet unpublished Selbu mitten pattern patterns. These will be released on a monthly basis, the 1st of September of this year, the 1st of October, the 1st of November, and the 1st of December. The mittens are all knit in DK weight yarn and are written up with colorwork mitten beginners in mind. That would be me. The idea is that at the end of the year, you will have four to five pairs of beautiful Selbu mittens to give away or to keep all to yourself. As a bonus, you will get the already published Selbu mittens, which serve as a good example of what you can expect in this club. These are not mystery patterns. All patterns will be released in full wolf photos on the aforementioned dates. So congratulations, Ellie. I'm so excited because I have never knit mittens before. I've only done like fingerless gloves before. So I'm super excited. Um, I do sometimes go up to like Tahoe or um, especially if I go to New York, um, which I would love to do very soon. It's been too long. That's, you know, in the winter time, you know, that'll be mitten weather. And I do love me mittens. So I'm excited to have some of these and some that I can give away to my friends who are in climates that do love mittens and would need mittens quite often. So Thank you so much and thank you for providing a membership to this club for one of you all, for the, one of these lovely viewers. And um, again, all the details will be in the giveaway thread. And congratulations, yay. So the next one is a lovely shawl pattern that I received as a gift, thank you so much, from Janine of Yarn and You. And it's her new design that is called the Yexa Shawl. And she's giving away a pattern for one of you. <laughs> Yay! So again, um, that giveaway thread will be in the Ravelry group with all of the details, same, same drill. So um, yeah, so keep an eye out for that. And then, um, so this shawl, um, I will tell you about what she writes on her pattern page. So she says, the Yexa shawl is a true triangle shawl that uses two complementary colors. Cho chose one, choose one solid color and one variegated color for a dramatic finished object. 
Kits for this pattern are available on her website at yarnandyou.com and the shawl is designed to use only one skein of each color however if your gauge is at all different from the suggested pattern gauge it will require different amounts of yarn so be sure to check your gauge so yeah so it's a gorgeous shawl congratulations Janine and um, thank you again for the copy of the pattern I'm gonna have it in my queue to make it's gorgeous and thank you for providing one for one of us for our community so thank you so community cork board yay community cork board is a thread in the Ravelry group where we highlight wonderful things from you beautiful makers about your shops about discounts that you're offering all of us um, that I love to highlight for all of you and we've had a few things in the last week so the first is Karen of Twisted Hues on Etsy and she's offering 15% off your entire order, um, including any sale items, through Monday, um, August 7th. So in a couple of days. Another, another reason to always be checking out this um, discount thread to make sure you're catching everything before I record. So um, use the coupon code STASH15, which I have right here, at checkout. So thank you so much, Karen. And then Chanel, my VKN buddy. Hello, Chanel. It's been too long. I need to get on VKNs again. Um, Chanel, who is the Piper Nell podcast, and she's a designer extraordinaire. She is holding a 20% off sale on all of her patterns to celebrate her newly released hat design, the Garden State Hat. Um, no coupon code is required. Um, so just go to her Ravelry store, Chanel Wu. All of the details will be in the show notes. And they're also in the community corkboard thread. And um, so go to her Rav store and put the patterns that you want in your cart. And this discount will be applied. So congratulations, Chanel. Hello. And last but not least, Zoe, who is of the button, buttoned up and pinned down Etsy shop. And that's her name on Instagram as well. She has been holding a giveaway on her Instagram. And here are the details written on her Instagram feed. So the first day of August means one thing I buttoned up and pinned down double birthday time for my girls. Yes, they share the same birthday and no, they aren't twins. And the icing on the cake is my birthday is a week later. Happy birthday! So to celebrate all their birth, all the birthday madness, I'm giving away a small sock set and a project bag. Ooh. How to how um, do you join in the birthday fun? Well, you like the post, you follow her on Instagram, you share the post using or repost using hashtag uh, bup birthday giveaway um, or buttoned up be up buttoned up birthday giveaway. I like that. If you have a birthday or a private account, send her a DM to join in. Um, and it's open to yarn lovers worldwide. Um, and she gives all the details about the deadline. And so yeah, I'd go check that out on Instagram and check out her Etsy shop. And yeah, so that is wonderful. And I did want to say really quickly the giveaway for the Game of Thrones skein which I have over there, <clears throat> um, will be announced, the winner will be announced next week to provide a little bit more time um, for y'all to take part. And I always put like the details about when the winner will be drawn on the um, header for the giveaway threads. I'm trying to be better about doing that earlier on rather than later, but it's been updated now. So that is the nitty goodness. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some not so nitty goodness although it's still good, <laughs> in backstage knitting. Um, backstage knitting is usually when I have rehearsals and concerts, which are coming up in a month, y'all. The new season is about to arrive. Um, I talk about things that I've been doing, about performing, um, <clears throat> life stuff that I've kind of got going on. So. Um, thanks again for all of your positive feedback about Comic-Con. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that little insider view about that nerdy world that I love so much. So it was so much fun. 
and um, I mentioned this past week has been the return of my creative mojo it's just I've been so inspired and I'm feeling so good about having a little bit of a rhythm again and and yeah but I have been also feeling still like I need to purge and simplify I had set aside this huge week of staycation to do this major purge and and minimalizing all of kind of the stuff that I have going on <clears throat> then I got sidetracked because we had some family stuff and I ended up having to go up um to my mama's so yeah so I still am in need of that and I think because I'm feeling this creativity coming back I'm just so um <clears throat> protective of it and I don't want it to be squashed down so it's like I want to do everything I can to nurture that and that means I need to do some major purging and simplifying so I really am working on that going forward I'm trying to figure out a new rhythm for podcasting as well so that I can utilize my weekends um, I was really it's something that's been in the back of my mind for a while and <clears throat> because it does take like a whole day to record and to edit and to upload everything. I think even if I had a way faster computer, I mean, my computer is about to fritz out. I'm playing with fire, <laughs> but um, I think even with that, it still would take a good chunk of time. And because I'm wanting to do all of this purging and reorganizing, I'm losing time to do that to work on this exciting podcast, which I love so much. So, and I was inspired because KT of Inside Number 23 was talking about, and some other podcasters as well, is that they're, they try to do it during the week and edit for a day or a couple of days and then have it uploaded for the weekend. And so I'd really like to do that. I think it's, what's been tricky for me is that when I have a concert series or um, rehearsals and stuff, that's really hard for me to do. Um, but I don't know. I think I think the time has come to try it out. So we'll see. So I might have like a different upload day soon, but I think it'd be really nice and lovely to have my weekends be my weekends. Um, so I can really keep on top of of organizing and life life stuff. And then I'd have more time to make things too, I think. So yeah, so we'll have to see. But it's hard because in the mornings on a weekend, um, especially on a Sunday, I usually film on a Sunday. Today's Saturday because I'm going to be gone tomorrow. But um, I'm in such a better, like, relaxed state. So I don't know. It's something I've been thinking about. I'm going to keep working on and milling over and working towards and maybe try it out a couple of weeks here in the future. But yeah, I, I just want to do everything I can to, to really nurture this creativity that's kind of coming back after not being gone but being on hold because of all of the life transition exciting stuff that was happening so yeah so coming up next week I've got tonight I'm gonna go to an opera um, West Edge Opera and it's really cool it's the the opera they're performing is Hamlet which I don't believe I've ever seen before <clears throat> um, live in performance anyway um so i'm really excited about that i'm going with my friend cheryl and um it's at a what they do this opera company is they go to abandoned sites like they were in a train station for a while and now they're in like a pipe factory um and they do this production it's very hipster <laughs> so i'm excited about that i'll share details about that next week in backstage knitting um, and then tomorrow I'm going up, as I mentioned, um, I'm going up to my mom's house and my aunt Shirley is going to be in town. She's the one who I made the, um, uh, shoot, I'm totally blanking on the name, the Charlotte's Web inspired shawl, um, for, and so, uh, I'm excited to see her and she just recently went to Sweden and Copenhagen and all kinds of stuff. Um, so I think she might have some yarny gifts for me so I'm really excited and she already told me she met some people who are knitters there and was chatting with them about it and um, so I'm excited to hear all the details about that so 
And then I'm hoping to see my sweet nephew. We'll see my sister and brother-in-law and him are at a trip right now. And they'll be coming back in the evening and I have to drive back around that time. So we'll see. Otherwise, I'm going to try to go up again in a couple of weekends. So, yeah. So it's good. I'm hoping to see him though because he's growing so... I mean, just developing so quickly. He's in that phase of like, he's crawling, now he's standing, like he's gonna walk any second now. And he's coming up on his one year birthday. So I'm, I'm, and I miss him a lot. I, I just, I miss him a lot. So I'm hoping to have a couple of weekends where I can really spend some time with him um, before the fall season really starts with performing and at work too, because I work for the opera now, so it's very, busy time there as well. I mean, it was at the theater too, of course, but yeah. And there's so many things to go see too. So on the weekend, so in terms of performance, so I'm rattling on a lot today. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this visit. I hope your project is going well. I hope you have a lovely day or evening whenever you should be watching this. And I will talk to you all very soon. If you are not a subscriber and you would like to be alerted to when new episodes are up, hit the subscribe button down below. And I will see you all next week. Okay, bye.